Hello, this is Sean Hafer, and in this tutorial, we are going to cover extrusion objects or extrudes in Cinema 4D. So what an extrusion is, is if you think about a tube of toothpaste. So if we, let's grab a circle spline. And if we had this, if this was the opening of our tube of toothpaste, if this was the opening of our tube of toothpaste, and you think about when you squeeze that tube of toothpaste, what comes out? A cylindrical sort of object, right? A stream of toothpaste, but it holds that shape. So that's basically the extrusion. The shape is giving form to the solid in one direction or one vector. So if we go up here and our extrusion is right here, our extrude object, you can see we've got a few other spline objects we'll use. Uh, but first let's do the extrude. And when I create an extrude object, um, you can see it's right here and then I've got this circle underneath. Now if I drag my circle and make it a child of the extrude, you can see now it gives that extrusion depth. So I'll go over here to my garage shading lines just so we can see that. Now as we've got our extrusion here and we've got our circle, we can also now see how these things would relate to each other. So the radius of the circle obviously would be the size of that shape being extruded. Um, if we look at the idea of a ring, once we put a ring in, let me turn off my extrude here, if there is a spline inside of another spline and they are connected, so they're, they're, they're one spline, then that will create a hole. So if you think about um, letters with you know D's, A's, P's, B's, any of that, your negative space inside will be, your openings will be extruded as holes. So that's something to think of there. So um, that we've got that there. Now with the extrudes also with our spline, you can see this is a little rough. All right, it's if we move in here, we can see these facets. Now, if we look at our circle spline, we've got it as, you know, we've got our radius here, but then we've got intermediate points and uniform and number. So right now, this is basically trying to uniformly spread out points along that spline. So if we come in here and maybe double that, you can see now we get a smoother subdivision and maybe we take it up to 36. And for this case, that might be fine. All right, so you can always look there and see if, you're, if you don't have enough facets on a spline you've generated inside Cinema, you can always come down here to your points. Now inside the, ex the extrude object itself, if I come in here, I can now look at what we have. So we've got our offset. That's how tall or deep that's going to be, right? Now, if you know what direction it's going to go in, you can always pick a direction. Um, but now with um, R21 and 22, you've got auto, which is nice because we used to always have to you know, make sure we were extruding in the right direction. Um, subdivision. So we can see here we have one subdivision going back. Right, but if we knew we were going to maybe edit this later, we could add a couple subdivisions in there as well. Um, the next thing we want to talk about is caps. So you've got a start cap, so that's where your spline starts, right? And then we've got our end cap, so that's around the back. So if you did need caps, you could turn both of those off. Um, we also have bevels. So if we want to bevel this, you can see bevel shape round. Right now the size is zero. If I take that up to maybe two, you can now see we get a nice bevel around our edge. And again, this can be controlled. We've got a um, from inside here with how many segments. So if you need a smoother curve, you can go that way. If you want to take it down even to one, you get just one sort of flat plane. We can also come into the bevel shape and if we wanted to, we could say that's rounded. We could go to a curve and then come in here. And if you command or control click, you can create your own bevel shape, right? So if you were doing, you needed a nice sort of molding look like wood molding or something there, or you want something a little more dramatic, you could always come in and use the curve, which is really nice. And again, just creating a command or control click to add it 
And if you want to get rid of one, select it and just delete it. Okay. Um, then we've also got solid. So solid is basically just giving you subdivisions, okay, on those edges. And then our last one that we have here would be step. And you can see step is giving us a little stair step. So we can come in here and see how many segments and we can come in and increase or decrease that. Now the thing is with, with a bunch of these is you've got to be careful when you've got things with a lot of detail such as type, um, you, you don't want your bevel to get too large or it'll start cutting into your spline. So let me show you an example of where something like that might happen. So I'm going to go ahead and just hide this and let's create a text spline. So if I go up here and I go to text, all right, we've got this text spline. Now our text splines, um, if we come in here, we can click on the text and now we see we can change that up so I can make that DAP and we can pick our fonts. Maybe I'll just make this a little bold and we've got height, right? Horizontal spacing. Um, now height will be your cap height. So if you've got ascenders or descenders, that won't fall into your height number. So sometimes if you're trying to treat it just like you would maybe an illustrator, it can get, you'll be a little bit off sometimes. So always just double check that. If you know something needs to be 150 tall, make sure that you're looking at a cap height. All right, and then again, we've got our plane, which axes we want this to be generated on. Um, but then if we come in, we can come into kerning here and do the show 3D GUI, which I think is really nice. And what you can do is now you can just kind of click and grab these little arrows. can go to each letter. Oh, we don't want to scale it. If we go to each letter, we can move each letter individually, which is really nice. It's a really nice sort of tool, a way to get around it. So maybe we want to bring that in. I don't know why we'd want to do all these, but you never know. Drop it down. We're creating something crazy. So that's a, an interesting little thing to explore. So that's the show 3D GUI. I'm just going to undo that and get out of those. So now that we've got our text here, if we do an extrude, we could do the same thing, create an extrude, and then drag this to make it a child of it. But if I came in and instead, let me undo, if you've got something selected, if you hold down your Option or Alt key, and then you create the extrude, it will automatically make your spline a child. So that's a little quick time-saving uh, technique. So when we've got this going on, we can have that happen. Now, if we go in here and go to our caps, you can see that can start to get a little funky in some of these areas. So you might not be able to do something huge. Now it's trying its darndest to make it work, but you know, something to just be careful with these, you know, these really tight corners can start to create some troubles. So as you're working on that, um, just keep an eye out, all right? Great. So now that that's an extruded object, if we needed that to become editable for some reason, we could always come up to it, hit our old C key, and now we've got an extrude object that has polygons that we can select and do all of our stuff there. So C or make editable, this little icon over here. Um, okay, so that's kind of our extrude. Now, one other way we can create, and again, you can create extruded objects from um, any type of spline. So if we came into our sort of uh, front view here, I could come up and use my spline tool and click, you know, just like a Bezier, create a spline. And then if I did the extrusion, oops. And then if I did the extrusion, we can see we'll get our extrude object, all right? 
and then we could add our bevel caps to give us a smoother look. And there we go. Okay, so that's kind of the extrusion. Now the other thing is you might want to have you might have a logo or something you've created in Illustrator and you might want to bring that over. So let's do one last thing here and we'll bring over some splines from Illustrator. So I'm going to open up old Illustrator here and let's do a new, we'll just do a letter, that's fine. Okay, so let's create a piece of Swiss cheese. So what I'm going to do is come in here and start off with a rectangle. And I'm going to draw my cheese. Now I'm going to go back to my circle, my lips tool, and let's just create some holes in this cheese. I don't know how many holes Swiss cheese has. All right, so maybe that's our Swiss cheese. All right, so if we've got all this here, now let's say we came in, we select it all, right, in Illustrator. We come down to our old Pathfinder tools, um, click minus front. Now we've got a spline that is a piece of cheese. Now Cinema 4D will read After Effects files, but only up through version 8. At version 9, um, it switched from being PostScript based to being PDF based. Uh, so that's the last version, version eight, that is still PostScript, um, a PostScript file. So it's not hard to do. All we want to do is go to File and we will save as. I'm just going to go to my desktop and I'll say cheese and Illustrator, hit save. Now when this pops up, we just want to go Illustrator 8. Okay, and if you are doing a lot of work, there is from Cine, or from Maxon, there is a plugin um, that kind of allows you to bring in layered Illustrator files and things. I haven't really used it much, but it is something if you're interested, you might want to check that out. All right, so here we go. That's fine. Thanks, Illustrator. Now when I come in here, I'm going to go File and just Open Project. You could also do Merge Project if you want to bring it in. Here's my cheese. Okay, now you can set Scale. Um, I'm not sure what size I created that on, but if you knew and you had to do a conversion, that's not a problem. You can do that. Connect Splines will make sure to try and connect any splines that are there into one spline object. So that, for example, was our holes. We want those to all be as one. Hit OK. And now we can see we get in this cheese spline. And it is off center, but you can kind of think, if you imagine, if I go to my front view, you know, that's kind of where it was in the page, right? So if you go into your rulers and you bring your artboard down to the corner or you bring it to the center um, in Illustrator, then it'll come in with its center point. Its center point is basically where the zero zero of the artboard is. All right, so that's just a little tip. Okay, so we've got this in here. I want this at zero, zero. All I have to do is select it, come down, zero, zero, zero. Just, I just tabbed in between and hit enter for apply. And now I've got my cheese slice. So if I create an extrude object or just hold down option or alt on a Windows machine and hit my extrude. Oh, I don't know why it didn't do it. Let me do that again just to see what happened there. Did I not have it selected? So my cheese is selected, I'm in that window, and option click, there we go. So it becomes a child automatically, it saves you a step, unless for some reason you mess it up and you have to do it again like I just did. But there we go, we can see we've got our extrusion. Now if we click up on this extrude, um, it is going back 100 centimeters, that's a really thick piece of cheese. So let's bring it down to something like I don't know, 0.25 maybe. All right, that's a nice little thin piece of cheese. And then we can come in and again, give it some caps. Maybe start bringing that up. Let's see, too much gets zany. But if we just bring it up a little bit, 
0.1 maybe. All right. And so now you can see we've got some bevels on our piece of cheese. Double click, go into our color channel, give it a little yellow. There we go. Now, voila, a nice piece of cheese. Okay, so that's extrusions. The big thing is if you've got two, um, if you've got splines, you want to make sure that the splines inside each other are connected. So if they are not, one thing you can do, if I come in real quick, let me do a turn these off. And let's go to my front view. And let's say we had a um, rectangle spline. Let's do this inside. We've got an inside. And then I'm going to also create a circle. And I'll scale my circle down, hit T, click and drag out here. All right, maybe we needed to create a bolt. Um, what we could do here. I guess that would be a nut. Um, we can take both of these and if we have them selected, right click and do connect objects and delete. All right, and then that will give you one spline object. So it connected those two objects and then deleted the, the two extra parts. So now if I create an extrude, so I have that selected, Option Alt, click, go to my three-way view, you can see we've got this little nut. So if we needed to, we could give it a little bevel. Right, and there we go. Now, if we needed to, this is just going to be an extra little bonus, um, you know, we're not beveling that the sides of this basically, right? So these are still pretty rough. But if we needed to, we could always come into this spline and I'm going to go to my selection tool and go to my point tool and I'm just going to grab all my outside points. And we've got a tool called chamfer in here that works on spline objects. So if I right click and I go to my chamfer, now I want to click out here and I'm just going to click and drag. And what this will do is once I click, it starts activating the chamfer and it turns one sort of corner point into a bezier point and two points so it smooths it. So if I click and drag, you can see I get that smoothing. Now the thing you want to be careful of, if you do it again, it basically does it to those so it gets really funky really fast. And I see that as a mistake a lot. So what you want to do, just start with that, click, hold, drag it out a little, or start dragging it and you can always then before you do anything else, come back in here and say, I'm going to make it 10. All right, and then you're good. Then go back to another tool and you're golden. So now what's nice with that, if I turn my extrude back on, now we've got those bevels at the corners to catch some light as well. So if we render that, we get a little bit more there. So that, that helps a lot. So that's extrusions in Cinema 4D and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.